It's a beautiful day here in London and we're here to talk about the importance of prevention in periodontology. Whether you're a healthcare professional or a patient, I hope the next few minutes are very useful for you. If you're a patient, just to get you up to speed with things, periodontology is the study of the periodontium, which is basically the supporting structures around the tooth. So that's the gums, the fibres, the bone, everything holding the tooth in place. And it's really important we look after our gums just as much as we look after our teeth. I'm here actually to talk to my friend, Professor Christoph Dürfer, who's the president of the German Society of Periodontology. He's a chairman and professor at the University of Kiel, and he's also a world-renowned expert in periodontology. So I hope you enjoy the next few minutes. Periodontitis and periodontal disease, how common is it? Periodontitis or oral, chronic oral inflammation is one of the most uh, prevalent diseases worldwide. It's always called a silent disease, so the signs and symptoms of it are not very present and you can ignore it for a long time. And in terms of gingivitis, how common is that? I would say more than 90% of the adults yes. will have yes. gingivitis at some area of, of their gums. And I guess it's really important to manage and treat that because that may eventually lead to periodontitis. Gingivitis is the precondition for periodontitis. Protecting against gingivitis will bring you on the safe side. The prevention workshop, could you give me a little bit more insight into the preparation for it and how it all happens? During the last decades, a lot of evidence was growing, so a lot of publications, high quality publications. and. Um, the task was to carry that all together and to focus it on a high level um, quality paper with standardized methods. Of course, if you make such a workshop, you want to bring the results out to the public. And for the scientific public, uh, it's a, a special issue of the Journal of Clinical Periodontology. Already shows the scientific quality of the papers that were produced. On the other hand, you have to bring that out to the public. And so these guidelines, they are on the website and there are recommendations coming out of that that could be used by everybody. One of the things that was discussed was toothbrushing, battery operated, power brushes, manual brushes, and it can get quite confusing. Um, so what, what did the workshop find in terms of the latest evidence on this? All these toothbrushes are just devices, and what we want to reach is a, a management of the oral biofilm. And the most important thing is that the device fits to your conditions right. and to your skills. In general, the power toothbrushes have some benefits, but if you are a skillful brusher, then of course you can brush your teeth with a manual toothbrush and come to the same result. In terms of adjunctive things, so things like interdental cleaning, is it needed to remove you know, the biofilm? If we do need it, again it's so confusing, there's so many different interdental devices nowadays. What's the latest evidence on this? If it's exposed to bacteria, you need to clean it. What happened is that the ranking, the priority between floss and interdental brushes have been changed. Interdental brushes are easier to use and they are much more effective. That does not mean that floss is not effective. It's again, if you're very skillful, you can clean most of your areas with the floss, but this is only a minority of people who will be able to do so. And you may have anatomical situations in the mouth where you cannot use interdental brushes, and then the floss is needed at these areas. Yeah, and then one of the other things that was discussed was the use of adjunctive chemical agents, whether it's in a dentifrice or mouthwash. Are they effective in terms of reducing plaque levels and inflammation? The chemical agents give a benefit to patients in managing gingivitis. Yeah. In a dentifrice, the effect is not that big than with an oral rinse. So if you have a gingivitis and you cannot control it, then the oral rinse will give you a benefit. There are so many things out there to help us prevent and manage gingivitis and I guess ultimately prevent periodontitis, meaning our patients can keep their teeth for longer, gums are healthier um, and I guess improve the quality of their life. You're completely right. This gives you the option to find the optimum device yes. for any person and so the professionals have to be much more individual than they have had to be in the past. Other things like diet, smoking, do they have a role in the prevention of 
Crohn's disease is? This is an interesting question. And um, the, the problem is that there is not many evidence about that. Right. I mean, smoking as a risk factor is uh, known yeah. since many, many years and is, it's addressed all the time. And you have evidence that cessation of smoking is really good. How about diet? Do we have much evidence on that? There are some studies that showing that the stone age diet, uh, stone age diet will be beneficial in terms of prevention of periodontitis, but we are far away so from giving advices space. which are practical in, in real life. Some of my patients come in with bleeding gums and so on, and some of them think it's actually normal when it's really not, and it's clearly a sign of gingivitis. In Germany, do they have anything which can help patients, you know, the first things they can diagnose and then seek help from a health professional? The German Association of Periodontology has a questionnaire which indicates you that you may have periodontitis. Oh, right. This is something that really should be done. It's easy, it's, it's fast, and, and then you get an idea whether you should go or not. So thank you very much. I hope to see you again soon. Yeah, thank you very much for the lovely conversation in this great place. Thank you so much. Whether you're a healthcare professional like me or a patient, here are four important key takeaway points. Number one, it's important to prevent and manage gingivitis because ultimately this may lead to periodontitis, which can lead to tooth loss and have a significant impact on the quality of your life. Number two, power brushes are more effective at reducing plaque than manual brushes, but it's all about patient-specific advice. Number three, interdental brushes are the gold standard, but there still is a place for floss. And number four, chemical adjunctive agents are very useful both in forms of dentrifices and mouthwashes and should be recommended to patients with gingivitis. If you're a dental healthcare professional, it's important to remember that each patient should be addressed on a case-by-case -case basis. And if you're a patient and worry about the signs of gingivitis, then do visit your dental healthcare professional.